I'm not the biggest fan of point and click adventures, but I gotta say, I love Rise of the Dragon. It was first released in 1990 for PC and Mac, and later remade for Sega CD in 1993. God, I remember watching my brother play this game, getting stuck, and the both of us just trying to figure it out. I was only nine years old then. Fuck. Rise of the Dragon is set in the year 2053. You play as private investigator Blade Hunter. Hmm, what does that remind me of? Anyway, he's been secretly hired by the mayor to investigate the death of his daughter and to put an end to the trafficking of a new designer drug that led to her untimely demise. Now, as is the case with any good detective story, it's so much more complicated than that. You'll explore the seedy underbelly of this dark future world, question its inhabitants, and follow one lead to the next. What will you uncover? Well, that's what you'll have to figure out. Seriously, I don't want to spoil the surprise. The story is a collage of classic film noir and sci-fi imagery with dialogue ripped straight out of a pulp detective novel and performances oozing with melodrama. Hunter, we've had more reports of kids dying. All were horribly disfigured like my... my poor daughter. Doom! Doom! We're all doomed! Have you gone crazy or what? Bahumath has risen again! I've seen him! What the hell are you talking about? Five thousand years he's waited! We're all doomed! You've been drinking too much rot gut. It's just great fun, and it can be had over and over again because, depending on the choices you make, the long, hard road to the truth will shift accordingly. If you're a hard ass, you're going to have a tough time cracking this nut. If you're a smooth operator, you'll... well, you get the idea. Let's talk graphics and sound. Visually, it's very cinematic. Backgrounds are rich with those little details I enjoy so much, like newspapers carried away on a night breeze, or some douche tossing his banana peel in the subway. Believe it or not, there isn't a lick of FMV to be had. Well, not really. You gotta remember, Rise of the Dragon wasn't designed with Sega CD in mind. It was a fairly simple computer game. Because of that, cutscenes are a series of comic book panels. However, the developers decided to add voice specifically for this release. Blade Hunter, for example, is voiced by Cam Clark, the voice of Leonardo and Liquid Snake. Hey, 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 I wouldn't ask if it weren't extremely important, right? There's a lot of dangerous business going down, and I think my boss uh, may be involved somehow. Yeah, some performances are cheesier than a platoon of garden gnomes on your front lawn. You must push them harder! You will either meet the production schedule or face the wrath of Bahumak. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I I'll see what more can be done, Mr. Kwong. But that's all right. Like Resident Evil, it charmed its way into my pants with ease. As for the music, it's fucking awesome. While the core gameplay is point and click, there are a couple of side-scrolling shooting stages. This is where it gets a little dodgy. Backgrounds lack the detail and atmosphere you've grown so used to at this point in the game, and the animation on Blade is stiff and snicker-inducing, especially when he jumps. The controls are decent, but not the most intuitive. It took me a while to figure out this jump, for instance. You have to press up on the D-pad and press the jump button in order to super jump. When I first played through this stage with my brother, it kind of took us by surprise. It would have been nice had there been a brief tutorial, but hey, that's me nitpicking. You want a good dose of neo-noir in your point-and-click adventure, along with a great story and memorable characters? Stick with this private dick, he won't steer you wrong. 